and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. That's great. Yeah, that's really, really good, yeah. <laughs> really good, really impressive. Oh, hooray, you bastard. <laughs> well, I know, I know, I can see it. It's written all over your face. You hate me. <laughs> but I don't care because I love you. <laughs> I do, you're great. I hate them. Oh, they're great. You're very nice, actually. A very attractive audience. <laughs> it's a joke. What is it? <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, <laughs> it is. It is a yet, yet another great day for the New York Giants. In Manhattan, they had their own ticker tape parade. To be fair, though, they don't use that ticker tape much in Wall Street anymore. The stockbrokers just toss government bailout money from the windows. <laughs> Disney is in talks to start a 24-hour news channel. I'm thinking, does that really... Do what? I don't know if I want that. Do you really want the news read by Goofy? I'm not sure if I'm into that. Iran's <laughs> 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 got nuclear weapons. <laughs> of course, most of you will be tuned in tonight to hear uh, today's big story and have me talk about it, so I will, and I am happy to. <laughs> That's right, it is, of course, the birthday of Charles Dickens. <laughs> what the f And I didn't even get anything! I know! If Charles Dickens were still alive, he'd be 200 years old today. Of course, he, he's, he's dead. He, he died last October. And, uh... It was a hot air balloon accident. His moustache caught fire. It was terribly sad, yet hilarious. Isn't that Dickens all over? Today in London, there was a very touching ceremony to honour Charles Dickens in Westminster Abbey, where Dickens was buried. The actor Ralph Fiennes read one of his novels to the crowd. Because who better to order... to order? <laughs> who better to order... Who better to honour Charles Dickens than... than Voldemort? Voldemort's perfect! He had a sneaky That's parcel tongue. What the hell's that? You know, you muggle bastard. <laughs> After that, Prince Charles laid a wreath on Dickens' grave. Do we have a picture of Prince Charles? There he is. Uh, <laughs> we should do that thing. Remember Prince Charles used to come out and do stuff here? Where the, why, is, why do we do that anymore? Oh, well, we can do it again? Oh, great. <laughs> Stay tuned. It's not going to happen tonight, though. Aww. Oh, well, maybe it will. <laughs> it won't. No, no, it's not. It might. No, it's not. Uh, Charles Dickens wrote uh, so many iconic novels. He wrote uh, Oliver Twist, uh, Great Expectations, Tale of Two Cities. Uh, he wrote the best books ever written, uh, really. Uh, he wrote the... He also wrote the, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. That was Dickens. <laughs> he originally called it The Lass with the Serpent Inked Bosom. <laughs> See, Dickens wrote in a very unique style because a lot of his stuff was published in monthly installments and he'd get paid by the word. So he would write more words in order to get paid more. It makes perfect sense. So he wouldn't write, the man went up the stairs. He would write, Mr. Crumbly Dumbly went up the crickledy dickledy staircase one humbly dimbly step at a time. <laughs> That's 50 bucks right there. I wish I get paid with the word out here. And then they'd just take away every time I cussed so I'd end up broke. <laughs> Oh, maybe you should pay me for every cuss word I don't say. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yup. <laughs> One of Dickens' most memorable characters, of course, is Tiny Tim, who he described as a criswickety little boy who was higgledy piggledy in the leg. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. It was like that. In A, in a Christmas Carol, uh, Charles Dickens describes uh, Tiny Tim as being lame. See, back then, being lame meant people felt sorry for you. Uh, nowadays, if you're lame, you get a talk show in the middle of the night. 
<laughs> yeah, I got you. I woke you up, didn't I? Oh, man, I'm all higgledy-piggledy in my pants. Are you Chris Wicketive in your trousers? No, but I will be in a moment. Okay. Dickens wrote about children a lot, because child labor was awful back in these days. And by awful, I meant these kids were not making iPhones. Dickens was... Uh, they weren't. <laughs> humor about child labor would fall on deaf ears, Jeff. Yeah, we it went seems we insane went to me. I it know. seems like the, the normally fertile ground of abusing children for cash seems to not be playing with this audience. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut that out. <laughs> we were about to do some terminal diseases jokes in a moment. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll really bring the house down. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but what I'm, saying, Dickens, uh, what I'm saying about Dickens is that his writings forced society to take on issues like child labour and, and poverty and homelessness. And thanks to Dickens, none of these things exist today. <laughs> totally eradicated. <laughs> Completely gone. Not here. <laughs> Much like? My balls. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dickens, of course, passed away in 1870. He was halfway through his final book, The Mystery of Edward and Drood. And that's why the final sentence of that book is, and the murderer was revealed to be, ah, my heart. <laughs> I'm dying and still writing <laughs> to describe my death. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah, no. <laughs> Sorry about the child labor thing. Ah. That was awesome, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> I got kind of carried away with it. I started off, and then I thought, well, this is going well. I'll stay with it. No, you, you were in the moment. I you, was you did in a the great moment. thing I, there. I like to stay in the moment. You should probably get out of it now. Okay. <laughs> is I, st I think it's fantastic that we still honor the novels of Charles Dickens. I don't think people read epic novels anymore. It's because of Twitter. Twitter has made their attention spans very... T wow, have the robots still here. Oh, oh, hey, look, lesbians. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, take a look at the lesbian at the far end of the row. Yeah, yeah, I don't notice anything. <laughs> okay, perhaps it's me then. <laughs> this is all the awkwardness of a Scottish Sunday afternoon. <laughs> What I like as well is that the director doesn't have a clue which camera to use next. <laughs> so, you know, I was thinking of getting the place decorated, Jeff. What do you think? Yeah, you might want to put in another wall over here. Looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about, what about, see where these window frames are? What about putting in actual windows? <laughs> Not a bad idea. Then we'd, but the view wouldn't be the same, of course. The view would be of where we actually are, which is in the basement. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's commercial break time. Do the thing. Oh, oh sure. We shall commence with more Mr. Fergley Wurgley and his jocular cadaverous companion after a brief communication from your local mercantile organization. That's right.